As the tradition to riding to Santa became more popular, so too did the small town of Santa Claus, having the only Santa Claus post office in the country. By 1929, its influx of holiday mail was made famous by Ripley's Believe It or Not, putting Santa Claus on the map for the whole world to see. The next year, the town received over one million letters and attracted the attention of Milt Harris, a wealthy businessman who dreamed of building a magical place where families could gather to celebrate Christmas and, of course, Santa. Santa's Candy Castle was the nation's first themed attraction, and it was a Depression-era attraction that made Christmas morning experiences and magic possible uh, for children during the Depression that otherwise would not have had that experience. Nothing was for sale, no admission, and kids could come and see Santa and the elves play with all the popular toys of the day, that legacy of uh, having free quality entertainment for families during Christmas seasons. Between 1935 and 1941, the Candy Castle experience expanded with the addition of Santa's workshop and toy village. But with the start of World War II, sponsors and guests alike turned their attention to the war effort. The castle fell into despair, buildings abandoned, holiday gatherings non-existent, and for the next 60 years it remained that way. Until Kevin and his wife purchased the property and lovingly restored Santa's candy castle to its former Christmas glory. Well, we got the castle restored and reopened after it had been closed for a while in 2006. And we were looking for a, a unique family event to, to kind of start as a tradition. We wanted something that would complement the other wonderful events and experiences that were already going on in town. So we kind of made up a, a short list of some different, you know, unique Christmassy events. And uh, it was just a few of us brainstorming and, of course, chestnut roasting. You know, what gets more Christmassy than that? And started looking through the list and we just kept coming to the top. So we said, we're, we're going to do that. Really no idea what we were doing, but uh, that first year was 2006. So this is actually now our 12th year of roasting. We've grown to love it more and more, but it kind of started off as part of just a, a laundry list of potential free uh, you know, family events we were going to host, and uh, I'm so thankful that was the one we picked. No one quite knows where the tradition of roasting chestnuts began, but its popularity as a holiday staple was sealed in 1946 when Nat King Cole famously sang out, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire, and the iconic melody, The Christmas Song. Since then, roasted chestnuts have been synonymous with the season. You can Google probably millions of different ways and recipes to prepare, process, bake, roast, boil chestnuts. What we're doing is uh, intentionally simple. We're stripping it down to its rawest form. We're taking the chestnuts that have been harvested. We're actually um, scoring them with a knife. We're putting a fine slit with an X across the shell of the nut, basically to release steam as the nuts are roasted. We will take long handle chestnut roasting pans like it's always been used traditionally for that. We'll just roast them directly in a fire. There's no preparation of the, of the nuts, no oiling or seasoning. It's just raw chestnuts. We'll shake them over the fire for about 15 minutes. It's not a super fast process. It's a little bit labor intensive. We were just doing super basic um, just to get, recreate the tradition of that process. It allows time for togetherness, gathering and talking and just family. And over the past 10 years, the Santa Candy Castle's annual chestnut roasting events have proved popular, not just for local residents, but also for visitors far and wide. It's really a pretty diverse group, predominantly families, either families that are local that'll show up. We'll have families that drive um, quite a distance and they'll come every year as part of a tradition. I think it's one of the most heartfelt traditional events that we have here. Uh, you get to be outside during the winter months, which isn't always the case, and sit around a fire, which is a favorite thing to do anyways. It's a small town Christmas. There's lights and activities that you can make traditions or continue traditions, and there's something for all ages, so it's usually a lot of fun for everyone who visits. People get out of these experiences, the, the family atmosphere and the, um, the joy of the Christmas season. What's really cool about it is to be able to hear um, some of the different experiences, particularly Christmas experiences that guests from you know, all parts of the country and even overseas um, have and share and some of the commonalities or some of the uniquenesses. It really just gives kind of a, a richness to the event that you might not otherwise imagine. You learn to appreciate people. You get away from the TV, you get away from the city. And he's bringing forth tradition that was lost in time. To it, it's gonna be a family thing till I'm 100 if I live that long. 